Hello and welcome to 4000 and Counting, brought to you by Hurricane E-Bikes. I'm Wattie, this is Mark, and today we are joined by Sheffield Steelers' newest defenseman. Kev Tanzi's joining the show, just been watching a little uh, little video release one of your old clubs put together. And from watching that, you look like my kind of demon. You step up, you play the body, <laughs> you chip in, you chuck knocks. Is that is that um, video a fair representation of your game? Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's a pretty fair representation of my game, especially when I was in North America. Um, fighting was a lot more in uh, in the game in North America, and I haven't really haven't fought in a couple of years just because you can't fight in most European leagues. You just get kicked out of the game and even get a one game suspension. So it's not really worth it. Um, but it's definitely something that I don't really shy away from. If it happens, it happens. Um, and yeah, you know, I like to skate with the puck. I like to score goals and I like to beat people up. So <laughs> yeah, definitely, def definitely a yeah. <laughs> type of player, as you could probably tell from the logo behind our head and the yeah. <laughs> it, it, it might, it might give it away. But yeah, obviously the Sheffield Steelers seem very excited to be to be announcing you. You you've been in Europe for for many years, but your journey did not start there. Let's roll it back. How did you get involved in the game, and at what age did you kind of decide this is something you want to do for a career outside of you know just for a bit of fun? Uh well, I'm Canadian, so I was uh, delivered with skates on basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh... I uh, started skating when I was about four years old. It was funny because I actually didn't want to skate at first. Uh, my We used to have an outdoor rink in my backyard. And my parents have a bunch of pictures of me sitting on a chair, just stick handling a puck because I didn't want to learn how to skate. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my my, uh, my father was always a big hockey fan growing up. He played just kind of like house league, like with his friends kind of thing. Um, same with my brother. So I came into it and I uh, was... A little bit more, a little bit more talented than the rest of my family, fortunately. Um, and you know, it was, it was an interesting process because there's not really any athletes in my family. Um, you know, like they play sports, but not for a living. And so it was a very, it was new at every step of the way, kind of thing. It was like, okay, I'm going to make double A. Like, am I going to make double A? Okay, I made it. Like, am I going to make triple A? Okay, I made it. Then juniors came, and then uh, I got a scholarship, um, a full academic or a full hockey scholarship in the states. So I went and spent five years at uh, Clarkson University, and talk us, then talk from us there through the the CGHL. What what kind of standard is that? And for for those out, I mean, most people in the UK, some are very knowledgeable, but some will understand the the OHL, the WHL, maybe the USHL, yeah. the Q. But where where does the uh, sorry, I've fucking forgot the name of it. Where does the CGHL? So the in. CJHL is, um, if you want to play college in the States, in North America, you can't go to the OHL, the WHL, or the Q, um, because that's like professional kind of a little bit, and college is supposed to be amateur. So for that, you have to go to a league that's called uh, Junior A, and that's what the CJHL is. Um, essentially, it's Tier 2 Juniors. And the OHL, the dub, and the Q would be tier one juniors. So I played tier two juniors um, until I got noticed by uh, a few schools and then committed to a full scholarship that way. Was school always something you wanted to do? Or was that something your parents wanted you to do? Or what, was it just a better route for you in your like hockey path? It was... Um... It was a bit of both. Um, I, I mean, when you're a kid, you know, we have the Ottawa 67s here who are like the the young junior team and everybody comes up and grows up and watches them and you're all excited when you see their game. So obviously I wanted to play in that league. Uh, I was drafted in that league in the seventh round, I think, by the Plymouth Whalers. And I went um, and I could have made it as a 16 year old, but my parents just kind of told me like, Hey, like just weigh your options for one year. And, you know, I thought it was a good idea just because, you know, there's nothing guaranteed in, in uh, the OHL. It's like, if you get hurt, then you know you can't go to college in the states because you're uh like you're, you're just not allowed uh because you're considered a pro and then so we decided to wait a year and spoke to a couple of schools that year and really uh really liked one of them that, that approached me it was like two hours from home so it was nice and close and uh decided to commit there what did you go into study uh i so when i committed to uh when i committed to my college i was 16 years old 
and I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. Um, so I committed to an engineering school and math is not for me. So I, okay. <laughs> I have a, just a, a degree in general arts um, because like I committed to a school basically purely for their hockey program without really thinking about what their school program was. So uh, yeah, I went general arts. It's, it's notorious when guys kind of go the NCAA route that they go on a couple of school visits. Do you, do you hit any school visits up, any parties? How the boys look after you? Or? Not really, actually, because I was so young. Um, like, I, I was, uh, like, coming in at 16 years old doesn't happen too much. I was basically just this size at 16. So um, there wasn't any, like, this guy's got to grow a little bit. So uh, when I was going to schools, I was, like, 15 and 16. So yeah, way younger. They didn't really want to. Tour, yeah, they they didn't want to tour me around too much because they didn't want their program to get in crap. So I just did like the the actual like visits of like the facility, the facilities, and going to see a couple games and stuff, but not too much partying, just because a little bit uh, when you're five years under the drinking age, it's a little bit tough for some programs to swallow that. How much does that change once you you get there and you're you're part of the the setup for five years? Clarkson's always had in in my memory. A pretty good hockey program you guys must be well known around campus and stuff like that yeah it's actually uh it's a really s- small uh university it's only like 3500 people so it's like everyone kind of knows everybody there's not really any uh can't really hide to too many places kind of thing if you, if you do something and if you do something big everyone notices and if you do something stupid everyone notices too so yeah. <laughs> what are the facilities like there they uh they weren't super great when i was there just because the the uh the rink was built in like 1990 or something so they were they were decent um but they just they just revamped everything like three or four years ago so now they have like a brand new locker room they have a new gym um the rink is going to get some uh some new new stuff going on for the fans and stuff too so the facilities are, are pretty uh a1 right now when i was there like they weren't terrible they just weren't you know nothing to write home about what was the uh, reasoning for zero games in the in the second season in the twelve thirteen season? Obviously, you played thirty nine games your first year at Clarks, and then second year your stats say zero games. Yeah, so I redshirted that year, which means I was injured. Um, oh, okay. I was in a, a pretty pretty wild incident when I was uh, nineteen. I was just like going to my car, like not not uh, I wasn't out at the bars or anything. It was just like a Tuesday night, just walking to my car from my buddy's place. And uh, I got attacked with some kind of blunt object. Um, I don't remember anything of it. Basically, three weeks of my life is a complete blur. But uh, I had my skull cracked. Um, I had three ribs broken. I had my shoulder broken and dislocated like 17 times. And then I needed surgery because of it. Um, I was in a coma for just over two days. Um, so, yeah, I took, I took the season that year to uh, recover from those injuries. What the fuck they hit you with? I don't know, man. It's like it I, I'm wondering it that too. But whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it, whatever yeah, if you're planning kind of on hitting object. the dude with something, whatever Kev got hit with seems to fucking do the, do the job. That yeah. sounds pick that it's gonna massively work. <laughs> severe. So, yeah. did, was there any arrests and was there any follow up with the police or any so like CCTV? There was nothing. Like, like I I don't remember anything. The last thing I remember is like being at the, my buddy's house that I was at. Um, and then it was just kind of like, uh, we were like playing call of duty and, you know, two guys or three guys and two remotes. So like I had the worst game. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go get my shit at the car. And, um, I was parked right outside and I was outside for like 10 minutes and they're just like, where, like, where's Kevin? And they're like, like, I don't know, like they took a look and I was just laying out on the pavement out, out there in the front. Um, so yeah, like I don't remember anything. Um, all they took was my phone. It was weird. Like. There's a part of Ottawa that's kind of, I mean, it's Canada, so it's not like too shady, but like, it's like not a great part, I guess, where it's sort of like, you know, like the drugs and all that kind of stuff. And then the student section and they kind of overlap a little bit. Yeah. So that's where kind of I was, I was staying at my buddy's place and it was weird. Cause I got like, when I got attacked, they took my phone. Um, but then like I was beside my car, my keys were beside me on the ground. Um, I had my wallet in my pocket that had like 60 bucks in cash in it. Like all I took was my phone. So I, no idea. 
that's what a crazy story. What does your coach say in this scenario? Obviously, you have to then go back and tell him you you're just going into your into your second season. It's not like you're a yeah. four year vet or anything. You are you worried for your spot in the roster at this point when you're taking a year out? Are you worried you're going to be back in next year or? Not really. Um, like being a full scholarship student, and I had a really good first year. Like I was talking to NHL teams. Um, and going to NHL camps. So I knew that my, my spot was pretty good. But um, once like my coach came to visit me and like I was in the hospital for about a month, like with the brain injury I had, like my brain was bleeding. Um, that's why they put me in a coma. And so with the injuries I had, like pretty, like not a lot of people survive kind of thing. Um, so first and foremost, they're just like, we hope you're okay. Like if you can ever play hockey again. Um, and then when my coach came to see me, I was like, I was, I was basically like not myself, like, I don't know what the right word is, but like mentally incapacitated for like three weeks, like thinking that my buddy had come visit me or that like I was walking the dogs one day or I was going to class and this whole time I was just in the hospital. And then, uh, one day I just woke up and I was like, Hey, I'm back. Like, like three or four weeks later, I was just like completely back to normal. Like my head was fine. Um, I lost like uh 75 pounds i lost like 30 kilos in that three weeks oh yeah i was like how heavy was very um at that time i was about i think probably like 105 kilos and i went down i think that's probably what saved you the fact that you had that such a big frame on you yeah so like that's that's what they said that basically like if if the injuries that i had sustained had happened to just like someone who wasn't in like extremely good shape just like then, some 70 kilo dude here to have been fucking yeah, yeah exactly like it probably would have been like see you later like good night um oh. so um but yeah i mean you know like i said i don't remember any of it um i'm just happy that i'm here you know doing a podcast with you guys <laughs> did you um ha- <laughs> no. um did you find it hard like was it did you get straight back into hockey like being on the ice did it take time to like get back into the rhythm and stuff like mentally and physically yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, whenever you lose 30, 30, 40 kilos like that, like it was like, I took off my shirt and you could see my ribs kind of thing. Like it was like, I was, I was smaller than like, I had, I was weighing a weight that I had weighed when I was like 12 years old and I was 19 kind of thing. So, um, that took a lot. That's why. And then I had shoulder surgery too. So, uh, I haven't dislocated my shoulder that many times. Um, Obviously, I, I needed to get some some screws tightened up in there, and um, because of that, that was three months in a sling for my shoulder. Um, and then with the recovery from losing the weight, like I needed a full I needed a full season to get back. When you went back into the following season, so your first season back, what was your what was your game weight going in? I was back to my normal game weight yeah. around around like one hundred two, one hundred five. Yeah, that's good. So you you, yeah. you go in feeling confident. Was there yeah. was there ever any like post concussion issues? Because obviously it's a very traumatic head injury. And we talk about getting concussions at ice hockey from body checks. I mean, if some guy is hitting you with a baseball bat or whatever it was, cast iron bar, some disgusting object, and you get a fractured skull, was there any like ongoing things when you like went back to play? Um. So I still from that day I haven't had a sense of smell. Okay. So I don't have a sense of smell. Um, don't know if it's from the actual brain injury itself. Apparently also, if you go through like a traumatizing experience, you can lose your sense of smell without any injury. So it might be that. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Like I'm fortunate where like my vision's fine. Um, my memory is not the best sometimes, but um, I don't know if that's, you know, directly related to that. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty much just sense of smell. How 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 did you find that when you're eating your favorite food, man? That must fucking suck if you can't smell it's, it. It's 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 wild, man. Because like I can taste it, and um, like we're so in Ottawa, where I'm from, um, I was I was in the hospital for for three or four weeks, and then like I said, I woke up and I was like good, and I was like in there for another week, and then I was saying, okay, like can I be an outpatient guy, like just come back every couple of days to do my shit? Um, and they said, yeah, that's fine. So I did that, and it's super hot here in Ottawa in the summer and it was during the summertime and I was wearing like just going to the car my mom was driving me and I was wearing like a tank top and this was like this was like a month month and a half after it happened and my mom's like you stink like did you shower and I just like give it like 
I was like, no, I don't. Like, I, I smell fine. Like, I don't smell like anything. And she's like, no, like, you have bad BO right now. And I just kind of like, okay, whatever. And she's like, maybe you like your sense of smell is affected. And I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever, mom, kind of thing. And then it kind of stuck in my head that day. And as the day went on, I was just kind of like going up to stuff that I knew would smell like something and just kind of like smell it and be like, okay, this doesn't smell like anything either. This doesn't smell like anything either. So um, it definitely does suck. But I mean, if you're going to lose a sense, that's the one to lose, right? Like, yeah. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Good, good call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good call. Let's move back to the hockey stuff. Obviously, NCAA is a fantastic level of hockey. You get to play against some some incredible players while you're out there. Who were the kind of top dogs in your division when when you were there the four years? Um, so we had Shane Gothaspear, who was on our team. Nice. Um, he was uh, he was pretty pretty incredible when I played against him. Um, Jimmy VC was another one um, who's been in the NHL for a while. Matthew Pecco was a great player. Um, obviously not the one that played 25 years in the NHL, but the one, one hour age kind of thing. And then, um, we had Alex Kalorn was in the league my freshman year. Not just um, those. so, so played, uh, played against some pretty high level players for sure in that league. If you were to follow Alex Kalorn on social media. What's that? Do you follow, uh, Alex Kalorn on social uh, media? I don't think so. No. He he's a good follow man. He's a wild card. He's just like living the dream in the NHL, and he just yeah, like his social media is like he's just living the dream in the NHL as well. Fucking love guys like that. He's oh, just like to, obviously, not, obviously not changed one bit all the way oh, through. I mean, gets his cups. He's, he's got he's got a Harvard degree. He started uh, a company called. Do you know Do you know Whoop at all? Yeah. So he he's like one of the founders of that too. And so he's, he's got so three, he's doing okay then. Yeah, and he's got three Stanley Cups. So yeah, he's he's doing all right, I think. <laughs> it was uh, we he like so in the ECAC, the first four teams get a buy, um, for the first round, and we were in the buy position playing Harvard for the last game of the year, and they we just had to win and we got the buy position, and we were up like three two, with like a minute and a half left in the game, last game of the season. And Kalorn just took over, just like scored two goals, like went end to end twice on us in the last minute and 30 of the game. And we just kind of like, all right, sick. I guess we don't get the first round by. And then we <laughs> lost first round in the playoffs too. So that was tough. <laughs> what's, the, what's the furthest you went in that comp? I only won one playoff round in college. We uh, we didn't have the strongest team when I was there, unfortunately. Mark, sorry, got me. Yeah, how was your shout up into the uh, AHL? Well, in with the Binghamton centers? Yeah. So I played I played with a bunch of teams in the American League. Um I was kind of like a an up and down guy from the ECHL to the AHL. Um started with the Binghamton Senators out of college. Uh it was a pretty cool experience. I mean, I went in as a like a young guy, obviously, and just kind of tried to learn as much as I could. And then the next year I played half the year with the Chicago Wolves and uh the Kansas City Mavericks, which is an American League team and a, an ECHL team. How did it feel playing the game you do in the AHL? Your first experience? Um, it was it was weird, uh, just because the game I play like in college and in the states, there's no fighting. Like it's it's like a no no. Like you can't fight. I mean, you're wearing a full cage anyways, so yeah. it's a little bit harder. And so I went five years without fighting. From like in juniors, I had I, don't know, I had like ten fights in juniors or something. And then, you know, five years go by and you just haven't fought in that long. And it just kind of like, kind of forget about it a little bit. And one of the first games in Binghamton, I lined up to, uh, to hit a guy open ice and I hit him and he was a tougher guy. I didn't really know who he was, but he was a tougher guy. And, you know, I thought after the hit, he would just come and rough up my cage. It was like my second game. And then he just drops his gloves with bam, 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 three shots to the face fast. I was like, oh, all right, like, got to pay attention here. So a bit of an adjustment for sure. But um, once you settle into it I and mean, you... You know, you, you fight some some bigger guys um, and just kind of get a name for yourself a little bit. Um, I wasn't necessarily a guy who was like a heavyweight, like watch out for this guy. Just more of a guy who's big and knows how to hold their own kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't realize this yesterday when we had you on. That 2015-16 team. Yeah. You, had, you played with Guy Lapine there. Yeah. 
and also Mark Fraser. I didn't realize this yesterday, but that was our last guest. So what was it like having those two tough boys kicking around the locker room? That, that's got to be handy. Yeah, I mean, Guy, I, I didn't know Guy too much. I just knew him from, like, just from my short time there, only 12 games kind of thing. But, it, I mean, he was obviously tough. Guys wouldn't fight him. But Fraze, um, I've known Fraze for a long time. He's an Ottawa boy, too. Um, and he, uh, like, he's, I've been, well, not anymore. But from when I was 14 to probably 22, 23, I was working out with him every summer. Um, like we were in the same summer group and like, yeah, like that guy is just, that guy is, is tough. Like they're like, there, there's tough. And then there's like, and there's like tough, tough, like, and yeah, he, uh, he was definitely someone that having on your team. And we had that year, we had Zach Stortini on the team too, yeah. who's like another tough guy. Um, there's a couple other guys who were just like big players who could fight too. Like it was, yeah, it was, it was a tough team, but wasn't, uh, wasn't the greatest team that year though, unfortunately. A couple of uh, like bona fide NHLs now, like Nick Paul, Dzingel in there. Yeah. Some, like, some decent NHL guys. What was it like this early on in their career? Obviously, we know what they're like now, seven years later, fucking winning Stanley Cups and doing bits. But <laughs> what were they like back then in the NHL? Um, Nick Paul was, uh, I mean, he, he was young like me. Um, he was kind of in and out of the lineup at that time, which is, which is funny to say now. Like He's like a mainstay in the, in the NHL. Um, and same with the Zingle. They were, they were both like, uh, I think they were both rookies and in and out of the lineup, kind of like more in than out, but just still guys that would kind of get bumped out every now and then on a, on a tough game. When you're the young guy, and you're moving out of college. Obviously, the first year you go up and do bits. The second year you're split in time. What was it like trying to find an apartment? Where were you living? And obviously, if you don't know, you're up and you're down. I imagine it happens more than once a season. Um, what was like the the adjustment to that side of life? So my first year, they just put me in a hotel. I was I was in Binghamton for like three weeks, maybe. Um, so I was just in a hotel that time, which was fine. Um, and then when I was the next year in Kansas City in the ECHL, uh, you don't make that much money, so teams teams have like apartments for you. Um, they find places for you to to stay. So that's where I would stay, just like at the. There was kind of like a place where a bunch of guys who would, you know, these guys are probably just going to be in the ECHL all year. So we give them like an apartment. And then there was a house with like five bedrooms, like a big house with a yard. And it was kind of like the up and down guys kind of thing. So I was in that place, um, which was which was fine. And then when, when I got called up to Chicago, um, basically at the beginning of the year of, of the American League, if you make the American League, you get you get a letter that says like, Hey, like, congrats, you made it like start looking for an apartment and you can find an apartment. Um, but if you don't, most teams have like long-term hotels. So I was in a, I was in a hotel that was like, it was like a Senesta suite that had, you know, two bedrooms, a bathroom and like a full kitchen and stuff. So like, it wasn't big, but nice. yeah, yeah, like did, did the job. But yeah, my first year I was, I think I got called up and sent down probably like close to 10 times. It was uh, it was pretty crazy. It was How's that driving mental health? <laughs> driving driving nine hours every time. It was uh, that it was interesting. It well, I mean, for that, I mean, they would give me the option of of flying, but then you're there without a car. And for like the salary I was making my first year pro, it's like I don't want to I don't want to rent a car every time I'm there because like I'm not making that much money, kind of thing. So I would just kind of eat the nine hour drive. I mean. For for people in North America, like nine hours is, is far, but it's not like not super super far. Like I can do it in a day. Um, but yeah, one time I got called up from the road, and like we were on a road trip, and it was only like a two day road trip kind of thing. So I didn't have too much stuff in the last day. Um, I got called up after the game, and I was like, "Well, fuck!" Like I got I got like my tracksuit, like a toothbrush, and like a pair of sweatpants. So it was like. I'm literally going up there and I was up there for like a month. So <laughs> I had to do a little bit of shopping. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a crazy world when playing in, in North America sometimes with call ups. What was it like then having going on like uh, 2017? You went to Toledo, you had uh, two years of a bit of stability, a bit more stability going on there. What was it like being there? I mean, they're always known as being a bit of a crazy crowd. Yeah, like they're they're from what I hear of it, they're kind of like the Sheffield of the coast, where right. you know, like it it can be a Tuesday night and there's still seven thousand people in the stands, kind of thing. 
um that was that was a really cool place to play like I always hold that place close to my heart um you know the fans were insane like you, you get some you get some some interesting fan interactions um from from those times for sure um i'm waiting until you come here then mate fucking hell <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> jesus christ yeah, you better, you better sure. come in here with your eyes like that dude like twitter yeah, I... lockdown <laughs> yeah I'll, I'm, I'm sure it'll be interesting because like it's oh, the, the fans crazy. fans are crazy here yeah well in, in toledo they were crazy too so i'm, I'm interested to see like what what the level of craziness is um <laughs> it'll be uh it'll be it'll be fun um but yeah no it was great playing in toledo like playing in front of that many people every night is awesome um we had i actually had someone started a, a twitter account um called corporal tansy um just like because i was one of the tougher guys on the team and would like patrol the red line and the people fought and it had like it was uh the Twitter account actually had like more followers than I did. Um, <laughs> and it was like, it was every single tweet was written by like a, like the same person, but it was written like a, like a civil war person. Like every tweet was like, I was writing a, a, a letter back to my family about how the game had gone. Like, it'd be like, be like dear, fa-. everything would start with dear family. I'd be like, you know, we were in the, I don't know, we were in the shit today against Cincinnati, but, you know, it worked out. Unfortunately, this guy got hurt, but the slap shot by this guy went well. Like, hope you're doing well and I'll be in touch soon. And it was like, it got such a big following. I think it had like 3,000 followers by the top of it. So, um, crazy. yeah. Yeah, it was some, it was, it was a really cool place to play for sure. Uh, you heard in Sheffield fans, there's a pretty high bar of crazy going on here. <laughs> so, yeah. <all> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, Sheffield's Sheffield's a great place to play because it's a great city. But we'll get onto that. I want to talk a little bit more about your your North American time first. And I, I kind of want to talk about like the end of your time because you go and you're in Toledo, you get called up Stockton, you also you get called up to to Grand Rapids as well. But then it's the next year you decide, right, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go to Europe. I imagine before that season, there had already been <laughs> offers for you to go and play in Europe. Yeah. So we, the last year I went, um, the last year I played in North America, we lost in the finals with Toledo. Um, so my last game was like today kind of thing. Like it was like June 5th or something like that. Uh, like we were playing a long time and the European contracts, like, I, I know I just got announced by Sheffield, like, I don't know, four or five days ago or whatever it was, but I yeah. I signed, I signed like a month ago kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that's a little bit late for how I've been signing most years. Like that year I signed in, I think I signed in March kind of thing for Europe. So I knew I was going, um, might not have been the best time for me to go to Europe because that was definitely like my best year in North America. could have been, you know, one last kick at the can to try to make it, but um it was it was really it was wild because like you go on a playoff run that far and like you're you're just getting the crap beaten out of you you know guys are playing through injuries um you know i was i had both hips taped by the end of the playoffs kind of thing um bruises everywhere like had a couple stitches through playoffs too just kind of getting through the shit kind of thing um and then like like i said we were done like june 5th or 6th june 8th i was in vegas for my like good buddy's bachelor party and then i was in check on like july 21st so it was like it was just like that month was just kind of like a you know like you're not even training because you just still have to rest from your body taking all that crap like let everything heal at the end of the season i usually i usually take about three weeks to like five weeks depending on how far i went to just kind of like take it easy and you know still go to the gym every now and then but nothing like just nothing like i'm in the back. phase yeah, exactly. Like, just like, you know, keep everything you have, but like, there was no point. Like, it was like, okay, I'm starting week one of training. And then it was like, all right, I'm in check. <laughs> so How much did was... that suck going to a July training camp and check? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. So was, early, was... man. It's so early. And it's so hot there, too. Like, they don't, they like, it was 35 degrees. Like, no one has, has AC there. Uh, I'm a big red ginger, so like I I don't like the sun. <laughs> um, then like, yeah, like it was it was, I got thrown into the deep end for my first year of Europe for sure. Like it was uh, it was uh, it was a wild ride. Like I got there in like 
not a not a person speaks English on our on our team um, on our and like on our staff. Like every single drill is explained in Czech, and then like at the end of the drill, they'll just like look at us like North Americans, and they're just like, "Good." And I'm just like, "All right, sure." Like, all right, I guess so. Um, same with like pregame stuff. Everything was we had we had an owner who this guy was like this guy was big, like, like big, big. Um, and like, he must, he may have weighed probably like, he was just like this big Czech guy who probably weighed, I don't know, in kilos, maybe 200 kilos. Oh, um, Ooh. yeah. Like he was, he was like, massive. Take, take down. Like if he dies at home, like they're gonna have to knock the wall down to get him out. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like he was, he was a big boy and he didn't, he had like anger issues and he didn't speak a lick of English. Like he could say hi and that was it kind of thing. And he, this guy was our owner. And he would, uh, he would have, like his daughter, who is the general manager, and like, like, just spoke English. And so he would be like there in a room. You'd have his daughter on the other side. You'd be on the other side of the table, and you'd hear him like motherfucking you in Czech. Like you don't know what you're saying, but like you could tell that he's pissed off. And then his like daughter would just be like, "So my father is saying this and this," and you're just kind of like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Like it was a, it was a, an interesting year. We. Uh, like just to put it in, kind of give you an idea, we lost to Balzano like seven or eight or nine nothing or something. They were the best team in the league that year, and we were like one of the bottom teams. We lost to them like seven or eight nothing on the road. It was the furthest team from us. I think it was like seven or eight hours away. We got back at like five a.m. in the morning, and they told us to put our gear on, and we did like a bag skate for an hour mm-hmm. just because. And the reasoning was because we were out of shape. It's like all right. one bag skate at five AM will sort that yeah. right up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, all, all's fixed now. Like so, just uh interesting place. So, you what did you didn't like it? Then? I I no, I was uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I uh, I ended up I ended up leaving early that year. Um, I had my so we were by the end of the year we went on a on a little bit of a tear. By the end of the year, we were pushing for a playoff spot, and we were playing in Vienna. And we, uh, there was like four or five minutes left and I dislocate my shoulder and I come back to the bench and it's still out. And I go into my trainer and like, just like, he was like just a guy who they're just like, Hey, do you want to be our trainer? And he was like, okay, kind of thing. Like, like nothing, no, no kind of degree or anything. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, do you know how, like my shoulder is hanging? I'm like, do you know how to put this back in? And he's just like, no. And I'm like, Okay. So I go on the bench and just pop it back in myself. And then because there was like no time left, I'm like, all right, I'll go back out for the, like the last two shifts kind of thing. I can tough it out because of I me going back in. They're like, OK, like he's good. Like you don't need anything. I'm like, no, no, like I need an MRI here. Like, let me get a scan on this. So they send me for an X-ray. And I like I tell them, I'm like, OK, like I don't need an X-ray. I know nothing's broken. I've done this before. Like nothing's broken. And so they're just like, they're like, all right, all right don't hear anything for like another week. And I'm like telling them like, I'm not playing until I get this MRI. Like I want to see what's going on. They send me for a second X-ray, like two weeks later. And they bring me to a doctor with the X-ray and they show me the X-ray. They go, see, nothing's broken. And I'm like, no, no, like I need an MRI. I need an MRI. The doctor comes up to me. He's like, so looks again, doesn't speak any English. Um, and he literally just goes like this to me. He goes, one more week. And I'm like, no man. Like that's not, that's not how, you, how we're going to do this. So um, I was fighting with them about getting an MRI. Finally, like a month later, they give me an MRI and they tell me, they're like, okay, you got the MRI. Like you're good to play. I'm like, no, no. Like, tell me what's on the MRI. Do I need surgery? Like, is this just going to pop out as soon as I get hit again? Um, so they refused to tell me what was on the MRI. So I was like, okay, so that's probably not a great, you know, me- like probably not a great thing if they're just not going to tell me. And then it slipped up at, like, in their conversation. They're just like, oh, we'll, we'll buy you out if you like, you know, if, if you don't want to play through this, we'll buy you out. And I was like, all right, buy me out. And then like they bought me out. I got all my money. Like two or three weeks later, COVID hit. Season got canceled. No one else got money. So I ended up working out well for me. But yeah, it was uh, that was that was not my favorite hockey season. That's for sure. It must have been nice going from Znoimo to Innsbruck. That's a great spot in Innsbruck. Like living in a postcard. Innsbruck is just incredible. Like it's, I, we, we went skiing at the end of the year. I drove like 15 minutes and the elevation was like 8,000 feet. It was like, 
<laughs> like every single day you wake up in Innsbruck, you're just like, holy crap. Like, is this real? That was, that was an incredible place to play. That whole country is just beautiful. So it's part of our, sorry, finish my drink there. As part of our new YouTube channel, obviously we're doing the podcast, but next year we're going to be introducing a little bit of um, like European hockey travel and kind of taking the fans to like these spots. And Innsbruck's actually like right there at the top of the list of one of the places we're going to check yeah. out. Where would you recommend, obviously, games in Europe, Friday, Sunday. Let's say we, fl- we we go watch a game Friday. What do we do this Saturday? What would you do on a Saturday in Innsbruck if you had a day off? Man, I uh, I really wish I could tell you that, but I can't because when I was there, it was full COVID. We didn't have, oh, a, yeah. we didn't have a fan in the stand all year. And <laughs> I think like the first two weeks it was open, and then after that, like everything was shut down, like restaurants, bars, bowling alleys, dart bars, like That's everything right. was, was closed. Like I remember that- uh, actually Inns- Innsbruck were, if I remember right, they were the first in Austria because I live in Vienna, but they were the first okay. in Austria to, to lock down. And then we followed you. But I'm sure you had it first because of being close to Italy. Yeah. I mean, well, it's like when, when you're over there, right? Like it's as like a, a North American, like you don't really know what's going on in the news it was just like we got we got to the rink one day and the austrians were like yeah everything's closed and we're like oh okay for how long and they're just like probably forever I'm like all right cool <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that sucked but i mean the after ski like the after ski places like i never got to experience that but from what i hear is like go to the hill go to a mountain and then just hang out with the ski bums and like they have some pretty cool parties apparently there yeah, Mark, we need to, we need to do this. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so, what did you uh, what did you make of the level of hockey? Because was it the Ebel first, and then it went to the Ice Hockey League, or the other way around? Because it... yeah, it was the Ebel. It was the Ebel when I was in Snoimo, and then the, when I was in Innsbruck, it became the Ice Hockey League or something. Yeah. Was there any difference in import numbers? Or was it still eight or seven or whatever it is? It's... It was. It was just a, a sponsor change. There was no no difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I wasn't sure. Did you? Um. Obviously, you, you liked living in Innsbruck, but it's COVID. You decide to then move on the next year. Was there like an offer on the table to go back to Innsbruck, or what was your kind of thinking for moving on? There, there was an offer, but it was uh, Innsbruck is just one of those places that um, they don't have a ton of money for the hockey program, and uh, I had a really good year that season. I think I had like. 10 goals and 20 assists and in, in 40 games or something. Um, so I had, I had offers that were a bit more significant um, in Slovakia. So decided to, to go make some money the, that next year. What a spot as yeah, well. Yeah. 10, 10 plus 18. Yeah. 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 And you, so you, then you moved on to, uh, to Koshitz here. Yeah. The steel arena, the GB yeah. did well there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, another place that like, would have been would have been cool to be there not in covid i mean because we all we could have was like 500 fans at the game at that point or maybe it's like a thousand but like that that rank is like it's like an nhl rank like it sits like eighteen thousand or something and and when they're good they actually do get that number so it's uh it's too bad that um didn't have didn't have the ability to have those fans there what did you make of the level in that league because last year when i was across visiting mark we went and we watched bratislava take on um, Nitra. Nitra. Okay. I, fu- I fucking loved it. It was fast. Guys were hitting. Like, it it's was fun hockey. Going. I-, I thought it was aw- awesome to watch. It is fun hockey. It's kind of like... It- it's it's fun hockey, but like it's not like real hockey almost. Like It's like defense is last in that league, which is yeah. <laughs> so fun to play. But like games are like 7-5, like 8-4, like all the time. Like I had... My time in Kashitsa had nine goals in twenty games, and like I'm a D man. Like, um, it was just like it was a ton of ton of fun to play the game for sure. What was the what was the reasoning, obviously, behind jumping up? You had ten goals a year before across the season, but now you're getting nine and twenty. Is it more PP reps, a bit more space? Well, what's the difference? Um, like why why I had more goals? You mean? Well, yeah, because you're you're running it like, as a D man. You're running it yeah. all, every other. Like yeah, that's yeah. that's a, <laughs> a big jump up. Um, I've I've always kind of been like my numbers are always pretty similar in terms of goals and assists. Uh, I I usually like 
it, I, I think I finished second in the league in shots this year in Denmark or something like that, or like top five. Like I, I usually have at least five shots a game. Um, so I put a lot on net and that year in, uh, in Kushitse, I had, uh, we had this guy, our power play was gross. Um, we, the, that ice rink too, like in Kushitse is, I think it's like the biggest one in Europe. Like the actual ice sheet is like an ocean. Like you can, you can have the puck for like 10 seconds on your stick without anybody coming near you. Like it's, so you just have so much room. And we had, uh, we had a guy, a vet from the KHL, Dennis Parshan who like his whole yeah. career played in the, in the, in the KHL, like super skilled player who just was playing like at a league that was lower than his skill. And he's a very good setup guy. And basically whenever he had the puck, like I knew no one was going to take it from him. So I just kind of found a spot to get open. Um, and like, I think, I think he had like, I think he had like the first assist on like five of my nine goals or something. And then another guy had like three assists on, on, on my goals kind of thing. And just two guys who who were just unbelievable setup guys and we were all in the same power play. So from there it was, uh, it was like pretty, uh, pretty easy to put the puck in the net. What was the, what was the reason in leaving 20 games in and heading to Bernard and check? That was a little bit of a, an interesting thing. Um, my coach and I didn't really see eye to eye too much. Um, <laughs> he was, uh, I don't even really know why, like he just kind of, had a couple of guys on the team that he just didn't really see eye to eye with. Um, so we, uh, we had our differences and then um, there was a, there was a game where we lost three, nothing to Bratislava. Uh, we were on like a five or six game losing streak where I was playing like pretty well and still like obviously putting up points. Um, and then we lost three, nothing to Bratislava on the road. And I was minus three in that game, but it was like, I've played it long enough to know when I've had a bad game and I could just be like, yeah, I was shit tonight. But like, that was one of those games where I was just kind of like on for all the goals against, like yeah. not really to say that they, you know, weren't my fault, but it was kind of like, you know, a shot from the other side of the blue line or like a two on one against me that the guy just shot and it went in. Um, and so after that, he, uh, he pulls me into his office and he basically told me, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to scratch you for next game. And I just kind of looked at him like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, yeah, the team's not doing well. And, um, you know, I need to show that, that no one is untouchable. And at the time, like I was second on our team in points, first in goals, leading the league in every statistic for defensemen. Um, and I just kind of said, I'm like, I'm like, like, what, what do you mean? You're going to scratch me. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't accept that. He's like, Oh, you have to. And I was like, okay. So they scratched me for the game. And obviously like, I didn't take it too, too well. I talked to my agent and he was like, yeah, let's just see what happens. They scratched me against the, like the last place team in the league that I think had like four wins up to that point we obviously beat them and so then he tries then he went to scratch me again um and I just walked into his office I'm like hey man like it's your call you're the coach but like if you don't want to use my services I will take them elsewhere like I'm not I'm not just going to be a like you're not just going to keep scratching me this is my livelihood kind of thing um and he like he blew up after that he's like oh you need to be humble like blah 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 like you know, like all that, all that stuff. And I was just kind of like, all right, man, like this isn't working for me. I don't know what's wrong with our relationship, but if, if you don't want to use me, then please let me go or let me go somewhere else. And then he uh, ends up just releasing me. He didn't even try to trade me. He's like, fine, like, we'll just cut you. And I was like, really? And so he, well, uh, he, he, yeah, he just, he released me. And like, like 12 hours later, I had a deal in the Czech league, which is like a higher league. I was making more money and it's a better city too. So I was like, all right, like this worked out pretty good for me. <laughs> that is an awesome city. It's probably one of my favorite cities in Czech. Um, yeah, it is. But it is cool. that, that barn, that rink looks like a UFO. That is on, I'm a bit of a nerd for hockey barns and that is my number one. Oh man. And they're, they're, they're crazy. Those fans too. Like I, I've played in some pretty like, fan crazy places in my time um we were like we were middle pack team i think we finished like sixth or seventh that year and there was one game that was like a, it was like a pretty big game close to playoffs and it was against the last place team and we were we lost at home like five five one or something like that like we just laid an egg that game and the last like the last six minutes of the game took like 45 minutes to play because every time the puck got dropped our fans would just litter the ice. Like it was like, 
it was like in between the second and the third fans went out of the arena and found as much garbage as they could <laughs> to bring back in. And it was literally just like, it was like puck drops, like everything, like beer, toilet paper, like garbage thrown onto the ice. And then they stopped completely. Like it was like 15 seconds of hurling shit on the ice. Then nobody else hurls anything gets cleaned up for five minutes and then plays ready to go again, drop the puck. Everybody again, just beer, toilet paper, like garbage. And, and this happened like, happened like eight times. What? And we were just, we were just like, okay, like, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> it was wild. The last game I was at there, I was in their player. I went to their playoff series and I noticed that I've been to a lot of places, but the, the guys just finish their beer and then just chuck it at the net. Yeah. I've yeah. never oh, seen anything like it. It's crazy, man. That it's yeah. There's uh, the fans get pretty rowdy. Like when we were in playoffs, um, we were we in the play-ins, and my parents were were there for the time, and um, they like they got ushered, and when they got into the rink, um, we were playing Liberettes, and when we got when they got into the rink, like our fans had like a very small section, and as soon as like my parents were like, hey, these are our tickets, like this is a section, like a Bruno guy gave them to the, gave us these. And they got ushered by cops in like riot gear to the spot. And uh, like the whole game, there was like 15 cops in riot gear just like around our fans. I love Czech. It's such a yeah. fucking crazy place. So my my old, couple of my old teammates, line mates, a um, couple of Prague boys, Michael Pink and Yara Seski. So we went um, we went across my my wife and I for, for Christmas in Prague, just like check it out, hang out. And he's like, dude, you're going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly because he lives over here now. He's like, I'm gonna fly out and I'm just gonna be like your tour guide. But obviously, we played, we were like lineys for five years. So he took us everywhere and he knows the the head of like um Slavia Prague, which are in the second league. He knows the head of their their team. So the first night we get there, we're like sitting in the owner's fucking box, eating fucking free food, drinking free pints. It was awesome. Then the next day he took us to um Prague versus Zenit St. Petersburg in the football for the UEFA Cup. You talk about riot. Every every copper there was six three six four, all dressed in black, batons, guns, and obviously Zenit St. Petersburg. They're from Russia. Their fans are fucking insane. Yeah. Like we were right in the heart of it. These guys are getting taken out by the by the police, <laughs> and you could see that they were like. Police were like, do something, please. So why don't you do something? Why don't you <laughs> why do you dummies do something? Step over the line, I dare you. Yeah, step over that yeah. line. But it's interesting to know that that's like hockey because you just wouldn't have the police probably don't even know there's hockey being played in the UK. Right yeah, now. like it wasn't like, it wasn't as intense because I've been to a game, I've been to a to a football game in Prague as well. Um I was young and didn't really know much about European football at the team, so I don't even remember who they were playing. But there was uh the one thing that's like we were in the family section. And um, we like there were three fights in the family section, um, and I remember like the one of the big things I remember seeing was uh, I can't remember which teams it was, but say like Prague one and Prague two. Um, one guy was wearing like uh, like the Prague one jersey, and on his calf he had a full tattoo of a guy wearing like the opposite team jersey, crucified, and that was like a full calf tattoo. I was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine like try to explain that to your missus. Yeah, babe, we've got a new title. Yeah. Check it out. It's... What? I really don't like these guys. Oh, okay, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, mad. How would that work? Like, I don't know, if, if your missus cousin or yeah. <laughs> like something like that supports them, that would just be awkward. I guess it's no different from Rangers Celtic, is it? Yeah. It's it, it happens over here. It happens plenty over here, Mark. You're more of the the football guy than I am. But... Yeah, who who are you going to be, uh, Kevin? Going to Sheffield? You've got two teams there, and you've got uh, both have been quite successful recently. Uh I mean, I, I'm like I'm uh, as much of a definitely call me a bandwagon fan. Um, I I watched a lot of Holland this year, like Man City. Like yeah, he, he was, he was just so fun to watch, and it's kind of like the first year that I started paying attention <laughs> to the English Premier League. So I guess like City is is kind of my team, but at the same time, like it's weird for me like picking a favorite team when I'm like 30 years old and not from <laughs> the area. I'm just kind of like, how do you pick a favorite team, right? I just I just like to watch good sports. Yeah. Well, but, my advice to you moving to Sheffield is don't pick Wednesday or United because 
you're going to have a lot of your fan base that are either United or Wednesday. And if you pick one, then the, half your ha- fan base would be very happy with you off the Yeah, I'll just, I'll just have a jersey Barnsley. with halfway, half oh, both teams on each side. Yeah. Did you say Barnsley as well? Yeah, you have to go with Barnsley. Go further, go faster, get fitter. Subscribe today. Hurricane e-bikes have a great range of bikes available on the e-bike subscription plans. The Cruiser e-bikes are perfect for beach rides, long distance rides, or just everyday use. The fat bike e-bikes look great and can cope with the toughest terrain, perfect for off-road adventures. The hybrids range are perfect for about town, everyday use, and leisurely rides with the family. Take your ride to the next level with the mountain bike and get ready for your next power-assisted adventure. Yeah. Did you say Barnsley as well? Yeah, you'll have to go with Barnsley. Just go with them. <laughs> Sounds sure good. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, you, you've had quite an interesting journey across Europe. You end up in Denmark. We, we talk about the Danish league. Obviously, the, uh, Dalton, the referee, he's he's from the UK. He's from the Elite League. I know he goes out and does games in in Denmark. We've had him on here before. He speaks about the standard being very good and it being like good fun hockey to watch. How was it to play him? It was good. Um, it was actually, I was like surprised at how high the level was, honestly. Um, it was, uh, it's good. It's like, it's tough hockey. Like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's physical. Um, the Danes are, Danes are, 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 I mean, they're big people, like just in general, like a, like a larger yeah. people. Um, so there's, there's a, it was pretty physical. Um, and, you know, pretty like every, any team could beat any team in our league for the most part. Um, so it was fun. The travel's not too bad either. And like, just like talk about, talk about going from two different cultures though, like going from Czech and Slovakia to Denmark is like, <laughs> like Czech and Slovakia is like, it's, it's a hard life. And, you know, like people, all of the like parents basically grew up under like Russians. Um, so it's like really tough. And then you get to Denmark and like, they're just the happiest fuckers in the world. Like yeah. everybody's <laughs> just so happy all the time. And they're just like, it's like everything, anything bad happens. We're just like, ah, it's okay. It'll get better. And you're just like, all right, that's awesome. Like, um, so I definitely, I like this year was, is one of my most fun years playing hockey for sure. I've only been to Copenhagen. So, uh, I haven't been anywhere good, else. Good spot. But what Crazy. I explained to people when I came back, I was like, you could chuck your steak down on the fucking sidewalk and eat it. It is the oh, it's cleanest wild. place yeah. I have ever been on this planet. Yeah. Everybody rides bikes. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's got a glow about them. Yeah. Like, there's fucking yeah. no fat people. Like, me and my wife were talking. I was like, there's no fucking fat people here. No. Everybody's None. lean, happy. I was like, no. But it then costs 12 quid a pint. So, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know there, there is that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it is. How much, uh, how much is a pint in Sheffield? Sheffield won't be too bad. Probably four or five pound a pint, I would have thought. Okay. So so pretty on par with, with North America, I guess. Yeah, similar. If you go into London, you're going to be, going yeah. to be pay, paying through the nose. Yeah, of course. Obviously, that's just the way it is. But obviously, I would still suggest going to London. You're actually in a good spot in Sheffield for like checking out the UK. Train links to London is not too bad. Yeah, you've got... Obviously, you're going to play in Manchester. You're not far away from there. That's a great city. You get to go yeah. to Belfast. Have you ever been to Belfast before? No, I've never I've never been well, I have been to uh, like UK, but I was like four years old. So as an adult, I've never been uh, over over there. Belfast is a spot. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, what a good time because a lot of teams that tend to play like two and two there and then you stay for the night. Okay. Or we'll stay for two nights. Obviously you get to go go out and test the city out the second night, but yeah. it's see it's if there's just, any fun to be had. Oh, it's it's just such a good vibe. Again, you go back to like everybody being happy, all the bars around Belfast, everybody's jumping. It's just I don't know, it's just a really good vibe to go out every just time I've people. been. Yeah, just Irish people, fucking views. Yeah. Um I got, I got some Irish in me, so I got a I got O'Neill as my grandmother's last name, so can't get much more Irish than that to be fair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's right on the money. I mean you'll see bars over here called O'Neill's. There's plenty of them. Yeah. The um the UK came calling after Denmark. I imagine Sheffield weren't the only team in the mix. What 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 made it there this year that you decided to come to the UK? Because obviously you've been playing at what what we would say Czech was a, was obviously a higher league than the elite league. I don't know where the, the Danish league and the elite league stack up, but what, what made it be this year that dragged you in? Um, I think, 
I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older now, so I appreciate just kind of going to places where I'll be happy. Um, the language barrier in, in some place I've been in the past has just kind of taken a toll on me. Um, and also I'm able to bring my girlfriend over to, uh, to Sheffield, which is nice. Um, nice. we're not married yet. So there, there's different rules in different countries as to how you can, you know, bring significant others over. So having her over will be, uh, will be really awesome to, to have. Um, we also have, a like a little, little bit of a band starting. I uh, can't say too much um, because some players haven't been announced. Um, but uh, we got, we got some, we, we, a few of us came together and said, Hey, you want to go play in Sheffield and heard it's a, heard it's a good place. So we got some, we got some, some good guys that are about to be announced in the next couple of days to, for, for signings too. So it should be fun. Um, I'm sure both of them will be down to be on the podcast too. I know one of them is uh He's uh, another another redhead. I don't want to release too much, but um, played with him before. He's uh, he's he's a good guy. Um, Just watching really, all the really Sheffield good. fans right now on fucking elite prospects <laughs> scrolling yeah, yeah, through yeah, guys yeah. that you know. He's a fucking ginger. This guy is going to yeah. be on hockey rumors by tomorrow night. They're already going to have announced it. I is think it? he's already been on the rumor mill. Uh, we we both almost came last year. Um, so this year we just decided like. You know, there's there's uh, three of us that are just really good friends. We were all at a wedding um, earlier this year, and uh, we're we're all looking forward to just kind of you know we we've played together. Um, oh no, the exact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know who it is. Um, so yeah, we're we're looking forward to playing together. Um, I think we're we're three pretty high level players for the league, so it should be a, a good a good core um, of of new guys coming in for sure. Did you get any? Uh, did you speak with Brett Pellini or Matt Caruth, who were your teammates in Denmark? Did they give you any tips or anything on life in England? How did I miss that great spot, Mark? Yeah, um, a little bit. Uh, Mac is Mac spoke to me a little bit. Um, just you know, it's a fun league, and and you know, it's it's rowdy, and the fans are crazy. Like basically the same things you hear from everybody who who has played in that league. Um, and then Perlini, you know, obviously as being like a, a dual British player, he uh, had nothing but good things to say about the league. He, um, you know, obviously him just moving up with uh, with Great Britain into the the, the A class. He's, um, you know, a big player for for the country, and he 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 had nothing but good things to say too. He's surprised. There's, uh, one of a player. Oh, sorry, Mark, I was just going to say he's surprised to see Brett after the season he had move to the Oberliga, the third league in Germany. See that league is like it's one of those leagues that like you can find you can nestle into finding like one of the three rich teams and the team is gonna pay you seventy thousand euros kind of thing. Like that's okay. one of my buddies, <laughs> one of my Alan McPherson who uh who he was I played with him in college and then I played with him in Kushitze. Um he was making good money in, in Kushitze. Yeah, yeah, like he's He's always like in the top 10, 15 in scoring of any league he's been in kind of thing. And he like, he was the top, top five score, top eight score maybe in, in Slovakia for I think three years in a row. And then like this team just found him and was like, Hey, like you want to come here? And at first he was like, no. And he was like, they, they said they're like, well, we'll give you this, and he was like, okay, pack in my bags. Like, <laughs> Let's you can, go. there's, there's a yeah. So I'm wondering. I haven't talked to Brett since he signed, but I'm wondering if he found one of those kind of like those those spots where he's just getting paid because like going and like Al this year had like my buddy who's played there this year had like 2.5 points per game. I think he had like 105 points in like 42 games or something like that. So like just dominated the league and just like made as best of money as he's made in his career. So. Good, good, good fit if you can find it. And if you move up, you end up in Adele too, which is a great. Yeah, league. exactly. Yeah. Mark, yeah. Sorry, there's me. one. There's one of a, a guy I want to speak about in your team for the Hernan Blue Fox, and that was I'm going to get his name wrong. Andres Zirins. Yeah, Andres Zirins. There, there, there we go. I would. Um, have have you chance, have you spoke with him since uh, oh, since yeah. the World Championships? Because that is one I hell was... of a performance that they had. Yeah, so he actually like me and him were were really he was probably my best buddy on the team this year. Um he he lived right beside me. We drove together every day at the rink. He was my stall mate. Um so we we keep in touch like at least once every couple of days since then. I was texting him all through the world championships, like like, hey man, does Lapia have it today? Should I put ten bucks on it? Like um but uh um, Yeah, more so than not in that tournament. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But no, he was uh he he got hurt 
Um, so his tournament ended early, but like he's, I mean, just just the pride that like those guys have. Um, it's just especially from like a smaller country like that. Like super happy for him to win a win a medal. Um, he's just what an interesting guy that guy is. You know, like he's played against he's played against every top player in the world basically from our era because he plays on Team Latvia. Um, and then playing in the KHL for four or five years or whatever it ten, was. Ten, um, ten years, ten, 385 uh, games in a K. Well, there you go, yeah. I mean, like, he's, do. He, he's a super, super interesting guy. And, like, talking to him, like, having a couple pints and talking to him really really puts life in perspective a little bit, you know, like, especially with everything going on with Russia and Ukraine and, like, yeah. Latvia being, like, right in that neck of the woods. Like, he was – we got drunk one night, and he was just, like, he was obviously keeping on top of that because his family stayed in Latvia. He's got two – He's got two young girls who were, uh, you know, just in in school, so they didn't come across to Denmark. Um, but you know, he was always keeping tabs on uh, on on the news and just like you know, he was saying that you know, drop of a hat, he's going back and he's fighting for his country, kind of thing. Like if he needs to, like just puts that kind of stuff in perspective. But yeah, he's wicked, dude. Couldn't be happier for him um, to to win that bronze medal. It's it's super cool. Sounds like we need to get him on because just looking from what you've said, he sounds super interesting. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm stats, sure he'd be down to have it on. Yeah, mate, AA, just everywhere. He's like been Belarus, yeah. Sweden, KHL. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. I think it's you saw him play. What I, I saw him play against Slovan. I, I actually got, I was looking through my photos the other week and I realized, oh my god, I, I got pictures seen of him play because he would have been he was in Dynamo Riga in the KHL when yeah. I went. To, yeah, I would have seen him play. Yeah, yeah, and he's so, from Riga. What have you been to Riga? I have not. No, do that. Good spot. Yeah, that's, that's a right. great spot. I'll, I'll have to go visit them. Yeah, it's a great spot. Fantastic yeah. city. Real cool people. Well, you've met you've met one. Yeah, then the people that I met in Riga, all super cool. Um, and it's not as cheap as it used to be. I, we went out for the world championships when I was like seventeen, and it was like sixty p for like a packet of smokes. It's like so much like a dollar. It was like a dollar for a beer. Like it was so cheap. But yeah. now it's kind of Everyone's clocked on like what a good city Riga is, and Riga have clocked on that like, everyone's coming. So the prices have like yeah, yeah. come up a bit, but still compared to a lot of Europe, still like super affordable <laughs> place to go. Real friendly people. The rinks insane. Like the, right the Riga. The, oh yeah, so it's kind of a bit like Kasicha. So that kind okay. of vibe. Yeah. It's, okay, it's, right on. Yeah, obviously because Latvia play their games out of there, so it's kind of like their home rink, so to speak. And yeah, a phenomenal spot. Let's uh, move back to to Sheffield. So the elite league has has been improving over the last three, four, five seasons. Ultimately, that's going to uh, attract players like yourself. What was it, you talked about, like talking to people before you came? What's been been said to you from guys that you've spoke to regarding like the standard of the league, the standard of the officiating, the, excuse me, the travel. Uh, I've I've heard that the the travel's not too bad from Sheffield at least. Um, I've heard that the officiating is terrible. <laughs> I'm being frank with you. I've heard that uh, like I, I thought Denmark was bad in terms of officiating, but uh, apparently apparently England can be even worse sometimes. So that'll be interesting to see. I mean, game happens fast, and I I, I think it'd be an awful job to be a ref. I mean, the amount of times that I motherfucked the refs, like why would anyone want to do that? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've heard that it's you know it's it's obviously different from any other league that I've played in, in in terms of like it's more like the English Premier League in terms of like there's no playoffs and well there are there's like the cups but um, it's just the the winner of of the standings at the end of the year is like the the winner. Um, I've never played in a league like that. It's more just like all right, fight to get into a playoff spot, and then once playoffs come in, the real dogs come out, and that's kind of when you turn it on. So it'll be interesting to uh, to have have that kind of different aspect of it um and then the cups i'm still not too sure but there's there's two cups other than that that you play for right i'll, I'll walk you through it and by the way i think uh foxy will be telling you boys just how important it is not to like lose a game on a tuesday in fife in september yeah. because it could fuck you in march i'm sure he's already told you because that yeah. is the big prize how it works here they do a challenge cup so it's split into to, to divisions and then it goes to uh semi-finals and then a final the finals hosted by the team the, the highest seed basically that makes it through they then host so for example if sheffield were the highest seed next year they would host 
Okay. Um, but it turns out the way the groups are kind of drawn, Belfast are always going to be favourites to finish the group stages as the highest seed because they have the Scottish teams in their group, which are notoriously not as strong as the English teams. And then yeah. you move on to the end of the season and it's it's a straight shootout, kind of more like an NCAA days. One plays eight, two plays seven, three, six, four, eight. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then it goes to like a Frozen Four weekend kind of vibe. You, go, you both go there okay. and Saturday... Whoever whoever makes it through, um, I think it's like a one p.m. No, a three p.m. first semi final, seven yeah. p.m. second semi final, and then you're back there. It's held at Nottingham. Nottingham's a great venue. Last year they fucked it because they they tried to put the money up too much and it was empty. This year they nailed it. They absolutely nailed yeah. the price. Um, it was a fantastic atmosphere, and it is it's a real cool thing to be a part of just because you have fans from everyone, but. I would love to see playoff series, man. I'm a, I'm a tradition- yeah. traditionalist when it okay. comes down to it. I want to see best of fives or best of sevens or something. Yeah, I love, I love playoffs. Like it's, it's kind of like where I raise my game the most, obviously, because that's when it matters. Um, yeah, it's always just, just weird coming to different countries and like seeing how these cups work. Because like we won, so we won the Danish Cup this year, which was the first top four teams at the end of sixteen games yeah. play single game elimination, like like tournament style um, on like a weekend. I think it was in like February or something um, later on. And we won that. And I like, I couldn't, I didn't really know it was that big of a deal until we won it. And like, I saw the trophy and we're all getting medals and like we won it. And I, I kind of expected it to be like, a, like, yeah, right on guys. Like we won. But then like guys are throwing their gloves their helmets, like fans are trying to rush on the ice. I'm like, oh crap. Like, she was like partied until like 7 a.m. that night kind of thing. Um, whereas in, in Slovakia the year before, like our, like the Slovakian Cup, we had one of our Slovakian Cup games was, I can't remember exactly, but it was like a Friday and we had a regular season game on the Saturday. So we sent our junior team to play the Slovakian Cup game. And we just like didn't, like we didn't care. Like, all right, we're losing this. Like it doesn't matter. So it's it's interesting going to different countries and like, Different cups matter in their countries, but some don't. Like it's, it's weird. The other but... thing is, like, you Sheffield under 18s, they're good. They're national champions. You okay. send them to go play a men's team, they're going to get fucking murdered. Well, and that's Whereas what happened. You, to team. Yeah. you, you send uh, a bunch of Slovak extra league juniors that are going to be. Oh yeah, we lost twelve nothing put... in that game or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and there's a difference. Like there's a major difference in the level of say U18, U20 hockey and in Slovakia versus the UK the the gulf is crazy so that yeah. would that would be a non starter in the UK they would they want to win all three trophies which Belfast done last year foxy's going to be he's going to be wanting trophies and sheffield fans are going to want to, they're going to want trophies what are you going to do to to be able to help deliver trophies to the orange army up there um i think my job is kind of a little bit of everything um, you know, I've always kind of been a, a, a number number one or number two guy when wherever I play. Um, you know, I I've actually this year was the first year in three years that I played the top on the power play. I've actually usually been net front on the power play, um, just kind of bat, banging home goals like just a big guy that you can't really move in front of the net. Um, so you know, I, I like to, to chip in offensively, um, responsible defensively. And, you know, I, when, when the push comes to shove, I'm not afraid to kind of force my will on people. Um, you know, there's, there, there's, there's some videos out, out there of, of me just beating the crap out of people. And I'm pretty vocal about it too. Like I, I kind of challenge guys all the time because I know that most people don't want to come and, you know, taste it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll bring toughness, I'll bring leadership and experience and some points to... for our sake, someone does next year. Yeah. That'd be, <laughs> nice. that, that'd be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it'll happen a few times next year. Just the nature of the, the game. What do you reckon, Mark? Yeah. I reckon you get a few takers next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I think you'll like, because uh, you've had a few years in, in Europe. I know there's some physicality in the Slovak league a little. I know in Czech they love they love the body the body checks, yeah. but they keep the gloves on. They love to keep the yeah. gloves on and sort of like everything's all with gloves glued on. Then Mucky said was quite physical, but it'd be interesting for you possibly to be back in uh, the U well, you've never been to the UK, but North the UK style. game is more of a North American style as opposed to yeah. the rest of the European leagues. 
Yeah, I mean, 15, 15 imports per team is, uh, I mean, that speaks for itself. It's pretty much all Canadians. I saw, I saw a thing that was uh, there's some Instagram, something that like there was a bunch of British players that left the league this year. Um, and there's there is a comment like where where are we going to get all these Brits that are going to be replacing the people? And someone commented like we're getting them from Canada and the U.S. So like, that was that was our post. That was your. That, that oh, was that was you post. guys. Okay. Yeah. And that was um, that was Josh. That was, uh, that was Josh Cardiff, Bash. He plays for Cardiff. Cardiff Devils. He's a British okay. boy. Team GB okay, nice. boy. Yes, that was him <laughs> that put that on there. I love that. Yeah, it's like his family holiday right now, and he's it, fucking I... chirping the boys. But <laughs> he's kind of not wrong. He's not no, wrong, I mean... but it is something that the elite league do need to look at. As much as they've reduced the the Brit numbers, the fact that some of these guys have stepped down while they've still got some some miles in the tank, where do they fucking replace them long term from? Because we need you Brit. need you need those yeah yeah you need we those need guys. those guys yeah. we need those guys playing at that level or we need to be bringing guys up because there is there's some some young lads in that league below that are plenty plenty capable but the problem we have over here kev is it's not very well paid right so yeah. if you're a young brit but if you're a carpenter or a fucking plumber or an electrician on the side you might be making a thousand pounds at your day job yeah and that a thousand pound a week and now they're like hey do you want to come and uh, play in the elite league? We're going to give you two hundred and twenty pounds. Like what? what the fuck are you talking about? I'm not going to take an eight hundred pound pay cut to come and sit on the bench with you guys. Like it's just. Yeah. It's, but what they can do is they could probably then go down to that national league, get paid three hundred pounds, which is more than they get paid in the elite league, and then be a plumber or electrician, be a carpenter or whatever. And now they're making thirteen hundred pound a week, which none of the Brits in the elite league are making. Like, I it's tough. It is tough. And I can understand both sides of the argument, but for for an import, you're going to get to you're going to get to play with British boys, and you've got a, a, a great good bunch packing up. Yeah, you've got a great bunch up there. Yeah, perfect. Jonesy, Dowdy, Whistle, good boys, and obviously they're going to uh, Alex Graham. He's he's been on here before. Young lad, bags of potential. Like he's going to be very good. Interesting to see who the other two Brits are. Obviously, I don't know how much of the history that you know, but. Jolly Phillips, the club captain for you know the last oh. fucking forever, basically. He retired last year, so there's like a huge hole to fill there. Brendan Connolly, he was there for a while. He's gone. So like the, there's like noticeable leaders gone from the locker room. Davy Phillips, another player. Davy Phillips, yeah. He's gone. He was there for years as well. So Foxy's really shaking it up to get these these trophies. I'm interested to know who the last couple of Brits are because that could be the game changer for you guys. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's usually how you win these leagues, right? Is like, no matter what the imports are that you bring in, it's like, it's the homegrown guys that are the depth guys that, that really bring it over the finish line every, like everywhere I've been, basically. It's like the team that has the best group of whatever country you're playing in. That usually helps a ton. Well, you've got Dowdy. He's one of the best. You, yeah, you're going to see a solid player. That guy, Perfect. that guy can snipe and you... If you just fucking feed him the puck, he he will he will score goals. He'll be good for your uh, right. he'll be good for an extra few apples here or there a year. Just all right, cool. Yeah. I don't get I don't get too many of those. I'm more of a goal scorer, so I'll just give him the puck. Oh, yeah. You're not getting it back. <laughs> like, yeah, that's if you give it a doubt, he's, he's he's a shoot first guy. And but that being said, like you want to see the guy make plays. He he's a very good yeah. British player. He has been for years. What um what have you heard about like playing with the Brits? Like, all the, all the Canadians and Americans I know that have come over from North America have fucking loved playing with the British boys because it's no, like you say, no language barrier. All the yeah. boys like to have fun and it's just like a completely different from what they used to in like Europe or whatever. Yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that it's a, it's a lot more fun. Um, just kind of like not more, not more relaxed. Relax isn't the right word, but just more of like a, a balance and lifestyle kind of thing. Um, like, the fact that I'm leaving on September 3rd was another huge selling point for me because I'm usually gone. I'm usually gone like the last week of July. Um, and like, you know, you've been through camps, you know how they are. Like the first first month and a half is just like terrible. You're just doing two a days and like, you know, you're working out and like it's you, you kind of need it. Um, but like you don't at the same time. Um, you know, my Maybe back in the day when the guys is... were turning up fat and fucking drunk. Yeah, exactly. But guys exactly. Were drinking like we... protein shakes and going to the gym and like training in the summer. Don't, don't yeah, need exactly. two days. You're just gonna kill the guys before September even comes. 
I remember we, when I was in Koshitsa, we had 13 preseason games. Insane. It's quarter of a season. <laughs> quarter of a season. Yeah. <laughs> what? So how many guys are banged up going into the regular season? Everyone must a be lot. I, mean, hurting, I was, yeah? I, I was burnt. Like I was like, I was like burnt out by the time the season started. Like I was like, oh my god, like give me a rest. Like, it, like our our first two weeks was practice, workout, and then like by that time it's like noon, maybe like one, and then another practice at like four o'clock. And like these weren't just like. A lot of them we didn't just do systems or anything like you're like it's like battle practices like you're you're going so it was uh it was a lot i suppose at the end of that six weeks you fucking feel like yeah let's go play some hockey but the first four yeah. weeks you must be like what the fuck am I yeah doing like when you're right just now? doing yeah when you're just doing the battles and practice like every day and it's like it's like one of those things where you're just like you're trying to battle you want to get your compete level up but you also don't want to hurt a teammate so it's like a weird little kind of in between, you know, like if I'm like, they want you to go balls to the wall, but if I'm, I can never go balls to the wall as hard as I go in game a game speed, in like, practice, yeah, but... because like, I don't, I don't want to go through my teammate. Like, I don't want to hurt you to get the puck. You know, like if someone has the puck on the other team and I have to get it and fuck you, I'm coming for it. But if it's a guy on my team and you're like, yeah, battle him like a gamer, it's kind of like, well, I'm not going to slash his wrist. I'm not going to. Yeah, exactly. Like, Kill my guy in the corner. He's supposed to be yeah. like the top sniper on the team. Like, great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's it's a little different mindset. So I'm definitely happy to have a, a shortened a shortened camp once we get there. Yeah, because that must suck. Like, especially being North America, and you're looking right now. You you you're getting ready to go training camp, and all your boys are on Instagram. They're all golfing. And they're all on the lake. Yeah. They're like, you're yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Just, just got back from running fucking hill sprints. Great. That was yeah. so much fun. And like when we're here, like it's like I'm. I started working out like five days a week, two weeks ago. Um, and I'm starting to, to skate, uh, three times a week, probably next week, maybe the week after. So like, I'm getting enough ice here. Like it's Canada. Like there's fucking, yeah. there's, there's 25 rinks within a hundred kilometer radius of me right now. Like it, there's, <laughs> I, I, I will be okay in terms of that kind of training kind of thing. Like it's, uh, so when, when, once we get there and it's just kind of like, okay, I'm like, give me the week of practice with the team or, you know, 10 days and give me a couple exhibition games to get back into it. And that's all I need. Like, especially as an older guy, like going to be 31 this season. Like don't, don't need all that extra stuff on your body. That's extra miles, we- isn't it? Sorry, Mark. Then. Yeah. With joining Sheffield, then you said it happened a month ago. You, are you uh, in regular contact with him or is it just when you move over? And also were you introduced to David Sims? Um, I was, I got to, check who i've been introduced to because who is david sims i've i've done sims he's like um god what is yes i have name? yeah yeah, no, yeah I, did, I did uh i did a chat with with, with sims yeah i mean i just johnny on the like, spot that's well it's that, like it's literally like I, I sign and i have i have pete spencer i have the equipment manager i have david sims i have you guys like i've never gone come to a team in in europe where like like you guys are like the sixth interview or something I'm doing since I was announced, like just kind of not normal. Like usually it's like, okay, the local newspaper wants a blurb and you're just like, Hey, I'm happy to be here. And that's pretty much it. But here it's, it's definitely a different story. Um, You know, just like the professionalism of, of the team clearly like the within like, like a couple of days of signing, it was like equipment managers, like what equipment do you need? Um, you know, the, the manager was like, Hey, this is where you're going to be living, blah, blah, blah. Like, Hey, do you need a standard automatic car? Like, Hey, this is what you need for, for your girlfriend's visa kind of thing. Like it's, it's all like, bam, 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 ready to go. So it's, it's definitely, definitely cool to, you know, be in a, such a helpful spot. Are you guys living in the apartments again this year? Uh, yes, I am living so in an apartment, like right across from, uh, unreal. in the like an, an apartment right in the city center. Yeah, the boys say it's fantastic. Yeah, like, they all lived all right. there last year. If it's the same spot, it's a hell of a spot. Right? We had Matt Petgrave on here. We had Brandon uh, Brandon Whistle on here. The, yeah, the, the boys said they really well looked after. And from what it sounds like, what you talked about there, just the pure professionalism is exactly what that's music to my ears. That's what we want to be hearing from yeah. the league. And yeah. that's what hopefully you go, you have a good year and you tell other good players and better guys start coming here I and mean, that's that's what we want i mean that's kind of that's you know without saying too much um that's what happened this year 
um, with a couple of guys that, that are coming. So, um, you know, just word of mouth from guys who have been there in the past and like, hey, this is a pretty cool spot. Come play. And we're like, all right, we'll come. Obviously, you got a you, you got a degree from NCAA. Is the plan after you hang them up to to keep in hockey, or is it to go and do something with your degree? Um, so I'm not really sure yet. Uh, I love the game, but I also don't love the amount of travel that it is, kind of thing. So that's kind of like the the thing every year that I think about retiring is like, ah, you know, like I want to want to have Christmas with my family. I don't want to miss another wedding. I don't want to, you know, miss another birthday. Um, and if I stay in the game, that's a little bit tougher to do because you're still traveling all the time. Um, I started a, a CBD company actually three years ago with a buddy of mine. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with CBD at all, yeah. but um, yeah, big in Austria. Yeah. So we started it. Essentially, I started it once um, once I turned pro. I kind of realized that they're like, man, in North America, they just give you any kind of painkiller you want to get through the game kind of thing. Like, it's like, like all this addictive shit and, and stuff like that. And I was just kind of like, yeah, there's nothing like natural there. So um, three years ago, me and my buddy started uh, the company and we actually got a little Pump it up. thing Let's right go. here. Get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get it on the camera. Yeah. So it's uh, impact of CBD. It's like a little like a roll on thing here. It's just like wherever you're like, you got pain in your muscle, you just like yeah. roll it on like that kind of thing. And it's just like within a couple minutes, like it doesn't hurt anymore. It's actually like, it's actually like magic. Um, but yeah, we started it kind of, uh, our, our mission is to help reduce the use of painkillers in sports. Um, and you know, like we've, we've been doing pretty well. Like we, we have, we have people using it in all the major sports in North America. Um, like NHL, NFL, NBA, uh, PGA, and Major League Baseball. We can't say all the players that are using it, obviously, yeah. for you know name and name and right purposes. But um, you know we're 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 growing pretty pretty quick, and it's uh, it's been fun. So whether I do that after, um, whether I go into hockey, I think I might want to be like some kind of trainer or something. I don't know. I just. I don't really want to work in front of a computer for the rest of my life, I guess. Put it that way. Uh, that's the tough grind. Mark, yeah. you got anything else or should we hit him with some cheesy ones? No, I actually, I actually want to ask. This uh, this cream, is it good for tennis elbow? Absolutely, man. Yeah, great it's great. Question. It's like, it's uh, it's really good. Like, it's good for, like, it helps reduce inflammation. So it's like kind of like, uh, you give or use that icy hot rub. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like that, except better. Um, like, it's not just the not just like a masking it actually helps like reduce inflammation so essentially it, it activates like we all have these receptors in our body yeah. and what cbd does is it connects to some of our receptors that make um anti-inflammation happen like easier and quicker um so that's kind of like the the gist of it so it would work for tennis elbow like it works for honestly like it worked like i know it's probably a little bit biased because it's my company but like i use this shit on everything like it's it's so good like <laughs> What is the name of the Sorry. website? Where can our fans find your the information and what you do? Yeah, so it's uh, Impactive CBD. So that's I M P A C T I V E. So spelt yep. just like that. Impactive. Impactive CBD, and it would be um, Impactive. I don't know if it's Impactive CBD. Let me just check real quick. If it's Impactive CBD or Impactive dot com, it is. Here I'll. Uh, do you guys have like a chat that goes along with it? Yeah. Like, when you post it. Yeah. Okay. Just I'll just, just post it right in there and we'll share it with here. people. There you go. So, have you had teammates and stuff like be reaching out and say, "Yo, let me try that." And oh yeah, man, I have. Oh yeah, like lot lots of guys. Like every when I went to Denmark this year, like I brought I brought uh, three or four sticks just for everybody to try, kind of thing. And a week later, I was making an order for 16 of them. Like, yeah. just like, guys, try it. And I'm like, shit, this is, this is good stuff. And then, like, you know, like, throughout the year, like, not everybody rebought kind of thing. But, like, I think, like, 10 guys ended up rebuying from it. Like, it's just. That's good. Like, it. No. Yes. Well, I just say it just shows the products work and people like the products. Mark, anything else before I go cheesy? No, let's go cheesy. Right, cheesy. Best player you've ever played with or against? Against Patrick Kane. Um. Yeah, <laughs> that looks like that, uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, with um, 
I mean, I don't know if I can say whiff. I was at camp with a bunch of NHLers. Like, I went to a bunch of NHL camps, so I don't know if that's yeah, actually yeah, with me. He's yeah. skating and playing with them. Like... All right. And Henrik Zetterberg, I guess, would be the other one. Or maybe got, Eric Carlson. <laughs> yeah. Carlson, yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. As a played against some, some good players, yeah. Yeah, very good players. Okay. Toughest guy you've played with or against? Um, Toughest guy I've played with <laughs> or against? I've played with Scott Sabaray. Um, tough boy. he's very tough he's a good buddy of mine um, I mean I played in the American League for 45 games so I played against some pretty tough guys I played against uh, I played against Dylan McArath I played against McDermott who's on yeah, uh, in the NHL um, I actually fought um, have you guys you guys see the that Ice Guardians movie yeah yeah so you know Brett Gallant yeah yeah, 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 yeah. he was uh, he was my, this is like a story that is I still can't really believe, but it, it's kind of hilarious. Um, Can we so, save this for a story for the boys, or have you got a story for the boys? And there's like, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's not so much a story for the boys. It's just when I fought them, like it was. I got I got stories for the boys too. Okay, um, well, let's go. Okay, yeah, so we like that. He, uh, it was like my seventh game in the American League or something like that, and I'm in Chicago, and uh, Wade Megan, who's like our top goal scorer at the time, is getting jumped in the corner. I'm coming off the bench, like rushing in. Gallant like stops me at the blue line and he's like, Do you want to fight? And I'm like this like young rookie, no idea, just an idiot. Didn't and I just look at notes. him and I'm like, I'm no, I didn't check the game notes. I'm I'm six four. He's like five ten. And I literally just look at him and I'm like, Yeah, I want to fight. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> he he's like, All right. He turns his back to me, drops his gloves, and just like starts going like this to the crowd, and I'm just kind of like, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm in one here, so he like like we had like a ten second square off, um, and I'm like I'm literally just kind of like I don't really know what I'm doing, like just trying to look cool in a square off. It was my first square off fight ever, and he grabs me and like first three punches are like right in the stomach, like ooh, 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 and just like pop 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 in the face, and like ended up like he definitely won, um, but didn't like beat the crap out of me. But it's just funny because like that fight came up on so they play in the same place where the Cavaliers play, which is a huge jumbotron. It came up like Kevin Tanzi career fights like five and two for seven. And it's like Brett Gallant, like a hundred and eighty five, like forty seven and like a hundred and two or something. And um that fight ended up like doing a ton for my rep in the American League because the guys were just like they're like, okay, this guy fought Gallant. Like clearly he's tough when in reality I had I was just a dumb kid. I had no idea who he was. Like, just like lucky I didn't leave in a body bag. <laughs> Man, he is so tough. And yeah. I think I I can see how a fucking big guy would sleep on him, but I mean that would be their mistake. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was. But you know, left uh, left unscathed. Like it was like got punched in the face a couple times, but nothing too. Yeah, like, you. yeah. What well, um? What about the best coach you've ever played for? Uh, Craig Barry Bay. It was, uh, yeah, he was pretty good. I, I played, uh, so when I was with Chicago, that was St. Louis's American league team. Yeah. And the next year they went on to win the Stanley cup with St. Louis. So I played with, like, I played with Bennington. I played with Barbashev. I played with, uh, Vince Dunn. I played with all those guys and Barry Bay was our coach that year. And like, I went from having like the most micromanaging coach in the world in, in, uh, in college to a coach that was like i don't care what you do as long as you show up and you play like like you can do whatever you want outside of the rink but just show up and when like the puck drops you're ready and it was just it was cool like he knew so much about the game he was tough he was fair like just uh really really like playing for him that was when you've seen his fucking career fight type yeah like he's a guy he's a guy who you listen to be like do this be like or what be like well <laughs> yeah, I'll pound you into yeah. the fucking stool you're sitting in. What yeah, a tough exactly. dude he was. Um, obviously, Jordan Bennett is a walking, talking meme gif machine. This yeah. year, he he just couldn't stop. Was he that crazy when he was in the A? What was he like as a guy? No, not really. I mean, I've sort of known him. So he's the same birth year as me. So I've played against him a bunch growing up. So I sort of knew him a little bit before just from like camps and like Team Ontario tryouts and that kind of stuff. Um, I knew he was always just like, you know, he's, he's a goalie. So goalies are always a little bit, a little bit different. Um, but he was always pretty quiet. Um, 
Um, you know, when he had a couple pops, he'd, he'd usually let loose, but, uh, he, yeah, didn't, <laughs> didn't see that coming, I guess, from, uh, from like, uh, what he's, what he does now in, in games. It's, I mean, hey, whatever works for you, right? Like, I've got my cup. Yeah, exactly. He's got a cup. I can't say anything. Um, biggest beauty you've ever played with? Biggest beauty I ever played with? Oh. James Wisniewski was a, was a pretty okay. big beauty. Um, I played with him in the American League. Um, he was like, I played with him in the American League after he got bought out for I like. say he got a ticket, right? Yeah, he got bought out for like $34 million or something. And you know how like guys put it on the board, like money on the board and shit. Um, he would just like, he was one of those guys, you hear those stories, like he would just put um, underground as like a big club in Chicago. And like Saturday nights, he would just put like my credit card at underground. And like, he would just bring everybody out and just get like money. I can't, I haven't even made in my career was spent that night kind of thing. Like, <laughs> just a boy, um, so he was, he was a beauty in that way. Um, played with, uh, you know, Couple other guys. There's a guy Colton Sossman, super big beauty, just a genuine yeah. good guy. Um, like him a lot. Um, and then, yeah, um, it's hard to hard to put a name. I played with a bunch of really good guys. Sam Harris, is another really good guy. Braden Christopher, Dan Champini in Sheffield, really good guy. Um, Get a good year. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely definitely leaving some out, but yeah, those are those are definitely some of the better guys I've played with. All right, then we've we've done the uh, we've done the cheesy ones. Let's wrap her up here with a story for the boys. All right, story for the boys. Story for the boys. All right, so we um we so when we were in Innsbruck, we like I said, it was closed. Like everything was closed um the whole time we were there. And Innsbruck, although it is a great place to like live, it's terrible in terms of travel in that league. Actually, it might not be so bad anymore with all those Italian teams that are there. But when I was there, it was like our average road trip was like five hours. Um, so we kind of took to um, we took to like our bus trips were just our party nights kind of thing. Um, so we had this like we had the sick pool or this this poker table that extended across like four seats back so and we had eight imports so it was perfect like we just like play cards chuck with the guys and like the beginning was like all right you know like bring two beers each kind of thing and then it got to three beers each and then it got to uh it got to like one bottle of wine each and then it got to two bottles of wine each by the end of the year we're like we had by the end of the year i think among like eight or nine of us we had like like two handles of whiskey that were just like being polished off. Like we would walk off the bus, like not being able to move. And we had, uh, we had, so this is actually champ was like, kind of like the leader of our, of our import group kind of thing. Like just like one of the older guys from the group and like the coach liked them. So he was talked to him. And um, we had our goalie one night got like really sick to this day. We don't know if he was like drinking or if he was just like food poisoning, but so he puked in like the bus bathroom. And when I say puked in the bus bathroom, I mean, he puked like everywhere in the bus bathroom. Like it was like, and it was like red, like we had pizza that night after the game. So he was saying it was a pizza sauce, but like it looked a lot like red wine and it looked mm -hmm. like someone just grabbed the bucket and just went like this into the bathroom kind of thing. Like it was fucking everywhere. And he didn't tell anybody or clean up or anything. Like he just went, went to the bathroom and came back <laughs> Our coach is the next guy to go to the bathroom, and he just kind of like goes, "What the fuck is this?" Um, so he's he's super pissed off. We're all shit faced. I'm like trying to be like a good glue guy and like just go to the front, and I'm like talking to him, and like I'm like talking like this, and it doesn't even make sense. Like just like can't talk, and I'm talking to our coach at the front, and he's just kind of like looking at me like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah," yeah. and I'm. I'm like saying that there's no way that he like drank and blah, blah. Meanwhile, all of us are back there pounding oh, booze. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like talking to him. He's like, I can't, I can't even remember what I said, but it ends up like by the end of it, I was just saying, I was like, I love you, man. Like love the whole team. And we're going to win a championship for you. Like, don't worry. Like classic. So the next day champ gets pulled into his office and he's like, he's like saying, he's like, what the fuck is like, what's going on with you guys? You know, like, fuck, like bus are getting a little out of hand. <laughs> he was like, the, the quote, the, like the line that's hilarious. He goes, you know, I got Tommy throwing up in the bathroom. I got 
I got Christo and Harrisy and, and Sauce all just wasted in the back. And then I got Tansy, who's drank about five bottles of red wine, coming up to me, trying to play it all cool with everybody, looking like he just sucked off Barney. It's just like, <laughs> I guess I guess my mouth was just like purple the whole time I was talking. Oh, I was just so like, good. just the just the we made we made Innsbruck fun, I guess. Was your coach a bit of a beauty was, in Innsbruck then? Was he all right? Yeah, he was good. He was a North American. It was Mitch O'Keefe. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was one of those things that, you know, we were – it was an interesting season. We had the most goals for and the most goals against in the league. Um, you know, just, we had – Just scrimmaging every week. Yeah, we were just – throw a puck out there. Like, no fans in the stands. Like, it's so hard to play, right? Like, it's just like – it's glorified beer league. Like, it's – so, um, but yeah, I guess that would be one of the stories. I mean, if I come back on, I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell a few others that, that come to, to mind or some that, that happened this year coming up. Well, we'd love to have you back. Yeah. It's been real good fun. We we want to wish you the best of luck for your season in the Elite League with the Sheffield Steelers. Uh, ladies and gents, make sure you'd like, subscribe, do all the usual business with these videos. Get it all over. Get these Sheffield fans excited for that 23-24 season. From what you said, it looks like you boys are going to have a bit of a roster. So I think trophies could be very near this year for you boys. I hope so. That sounds like a plan to us. Guys, this has been fun. Peace. Peace. Take care. Mm-hmm.